check ISN. If we stay at seven, do we go defense, offense, or best player available? In my opinion, best player available regardless. I'm I, Look, we got so many needs and holes. I think BPA is the best way to go. And if that's an offensive lineman, take the offensive lineman. If that's the linebacker, take the linebacker. With that said, if it's me, I'm doing best trade available. And <laughs> I'm trading back. No <laughs> doubt about it. We have a super chat. Shh, thank you so much, Travis Doyle. He says, should the Lions look to target Malcolm Butler in free agency? Antonio Hightower, should we target Malcolm Butler? Um, nah, mm -mm, nah. Mm -mm. <laughs> um, Malcolm, Malcolm Butler, no. First of all, no more Patriots. Uh, second yeah, of all, yeah, yeah, did y'all yeah. see that guy with the Titans? He's he, he was the Super Bowl hero with the Patriots and the Titans. He was a liability. Um, he's just not that good. Um, and no, I wouldn't sign him. And I don't even think he's better than well, he could be better than Okuda or oh, or, or but I would kind of expect that when you're that old. But no, nah, don't even sign him. You wouldn't even need him. Okay, yeah, Riley Reef. Would you sign Riley Reef? Back to the offensive line, Mark Oram. Well, again, he's probably going to be too expensive for Detroit. Um, if they could, if they could somehow get him back for a reasonable price, it'd be nice, man. Um, you could, you could throw him at guard or tackle. Um, he'd be an instant upgrade, but I, I just think his price tag is going to be way too high. I think it's probably, I, I'm not sure what he was making in Minnesota. I think he was making an average of 11 or 12 million a year. Uh, that's just, that's just kind of a guess, but. Uh, if you can get him out of out a few million less. I don't know. Make a call, man. See what, man. See what happens because he'd be an instant upgrade. That's for sure. The Great Barrier Reef. What I loved hearing him when he got drafted is the greatest story of all time. Is when he was in college, he got buck naked and he ran yeah. through the college. As soon as yeah. I heard that, I thought of the movie Old School and I said, "I love this guy. This guy's a great player. We got to have him." Anyone running through the quads naked is my guy. You're my boy, Blue. You're my boy, Blue. Could Goff lead the Lions to the playoffs with a true number one, which he's never had? He went on to a Super Bowl. Well, yeah, he's he look. He's led the he's led the Los Angeles Rams to a Super Bowl. So, but I think it's not. It has nothing to do with wide receiver. I think you need to have defense. I mean, we're, right now with the Detroit Lions, we ain't got a defense, right, Avery? No, we don't got no, nobody. I'm sorry. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta be on my spirit of Detroit stuff right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> if you think he needs a true number one, you have not been here for the last 15 years. Okay, you have not seen wide receiver taken five times in six years. You have not seen the stuff we have seen. Calvin Johnson and Stafford best connection. You know, in the in the 2010s. Still couldn't get there. You need defense. You need some, something like almost embedded in the team where their idealistic is defense, not throwing the ball 600 times like we had before. We need this built differently. So that's my take on it. Look how the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won this Super Bowl. Tom Brady gets a lot of credit. But if you watch the Super Bowl, what we see, that defensive line – they got after Patrick Mahomes like I've never seen before. You got to have defense, yeah. folks. You got to have a defensive line. You got to build that defense up. Mm -hmm. And I, the Lions, the, the closest we came to winning a playoff game, we should have won it, is when we had the number two defense in the NFL 2014. We had Indomitian Sue. We had that defensive line. We were getting at it. You got to have defense. Yeah. And I think that if we could build a dominant defense – I think that the Lions could really do do something and run the football, by the way. You do that, you stop the run, you bite kneecaps off, just like I'm seeing right here from Ryan. We want those kneecaps, no doubt about yeah, it. That's what we that's do. That's right, man. No problem, man, no problem. Let's see, ISN, what about Corey Davis? I like Corey Davis. I think, he, I think he's a number one wide receiver. The issue is I just don't think we got the money, Mark. I don't think we do either, man. He's probably going to be – he's over $10 million, I'm going to assume, man. $10, 12000000 million. Yeah. Um, he's never really been – he did have a breakout year this year for Tennessee, but he's never been consistent. His first his first couple of years were just kind of like, wow, this guy even going to be like a starter. But he he balled out last year. He was he did have some inconsistent games too as well, but no, nah, we can't pick up a guy like that. He's, he's Again, he's out of our price range. 
Uh, we're not going to be able to afford a guy like Corey Davis. It would be nice to bring him on, but not for that type of cash. 145 in the building. Let's get to 100 likes. We're 18 away. That would be fan freaking tested. Do you think it'd be better or cheaper to kick Big V inside a guard or draft a right tackle? First off, I think that yeah. if that's his best position, I don't care how much he is, we got to use him because we're paying this dude money. <laughs> yeah. Put him at yeah. guard if that's where he's at. Well, that's the thing, right, Mike? That That's the thing about uh, Big V. He was a train wreck at right tackle. He can't. He can't catch up with those speed uh, defensive ends coming off the edge. Um, he was better suited as a guard. And I know it's a lot of money for a guard, but that's where he's better suited. He's a better run blocker than he is a pass blocker. Um, I think he needs to be moved inside, but uh, I don't want I don't want to see him at right tackle. Honestly, I, I really don't. I just want to see him used because I want him. I, I'm not going to lie, man. Yeah. I want him cut next year. Yep. I don't even want him on the team. But when you're paying the way we're paying this guy, he needs to be on the field. Antonio Hightower, I heard you make that that sound. When you make that sound, you want to say something. Oh, that was about something else. But, yeah, we definitely got a big B. I mean, I guess you can put him at guard because, I mean, he's not better than Crosby at tackle. He, what, I, that's one of the few Bob Quinn moves. As much as I was with a lot of his moves, that move I was kind of like, but Crosby's already better, man. I don't know mm -hmm. why. Yeah. Why are you signing him? And mm -hmm. you signed the guy who, did, who had his best – year as a guard for the eagles that was his best year as a guard i never understood that movie. got a great question and a super trap from travis dooley i appreciate you bro he says thoughts on drafting amon st brown and des and des newsome avery what do you think about amon st brown and des news you know i've only seen a couple things from amon st brown but I, I, I'd I look at it a little more. I can't make an informed decision. I'm not about to be up here telling nobody. You know, i only seen a couple of things because I've been enamored with Michael Parsons. And uh, I've been enamored with Farley as well. So I'm not about to sit up <laughs> yeah, here. Buddy, like, yeah. I know what I'm talking about when I say I'm on say Brown. I seen one highlight tape and I, I was like, okay, oh, dude, cool. But I haven't done no research, you know. So I think he'd be a good value pick. If you can get him in the third round, we got two third round draft picks. But again, it just depends what we do with the, the first two picks, right? I'm not going to take a wide receiver in the first round and take one in the third round. I don't think that'd be too smart. But if we decide to get a wide receiver in the third round, I think Amase Brown would be good. He's got that speed. I think he could he could benefit. Ah, it's just It sucks because I don't think he's like a true number one one, right? No, we have man, Tyrell so Williams. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, he's more of a he's more of a slot receiver, I'd say. I'm on St. Brown. Yeah, I'm, he's got some good size to him, though. Six one, about one ninety five, two hundred pounds. Um, quick, you know what I mean. Um, five star recruit coming out of uh, high school, man. The guy had all the tools. Uh, he, he's a good wide receiver, but I think he he would fit. He, he would fit more um, at the slot. TMF says, what would be the best defensive end the Lions could pick up in the draft and or free agency? Mm. What sucks about this draft is, is there's not a Chase Young there. Antonio Hightower, what, how could we fix this solution for defensive end? Uh, yeah, there's, there is no Chase Young, but there is a Jalen Phillips, the best, the best defensive lineman coming out of Miami. Now, there's a caveat with him. He retired for a year came back as concussion injury um, problems a lot of people think he's the number one edge but their problem with him is his injury history like i said he came from um i think it was ucla doctors he was getting he's having concussion problems doctors told him to retire he retired he got a second opinion came back last year for miami dominated looked like their best defensive lineman but greg wasn't playing but you know he was still better than greg um i would love to get him um you probably you don't take him at seven you can get him later yeah, so the injury problems. Um, yeah, the only problem with him is I don't want him to end up like he gets he gets in the NFL, he gets a concussion, he's like, oh yeah, it's time to go. Because a lot of the times when you get one concussion, that turned to two, that turned to four. Sometimes it turns mm -hmm. to a pattern. So that's the only thing I'm really worried about because on the field, his tape best in the class. And when we talk about him specifically, I actually have a video I'm creating right now with the top ten uh, defensive prospects the line should take a look at, and he is part of that. No doubt about it. Huge shout out to Frog Crop. Hey, fellas, 
Have you guys heard of anything about Marvin Jones and what Campbell and Holmes have to do? The tricky because the better coaching in the house makes some players better. So evaluating is very important. When it comes to Marvin Jones Jr., this is what I know. He's not going to be in Detroit. He's going to probably go to a team like the, the Rams. He wants to be a competitor. He wants to be on a competitive team. And uh, he's not going to be in Detroit. And no. so it's definitely tricky to, to get this wide receiver. But his days in Detroit seems to be over, Frog Crop. Mark, would, do you agree? Yeah, I haven't heard too much about Marvin Jones. I know he's he was, he was kind of put on Instagram. He'd like to go to L.A. A couple guys want to go to the Rams, but... The Rams are in are in cap purgatory as uh, as well. They ha they have no money at all. Mm -hmm. So I, I I can't really see them adding anything right now. They're gonna have to cut a bunch of players, um, and I th I think they're kind of doing that. So I haven't heard anything about Marvin Jones. Um, I just know that he'll probably go to uh, a team and he'll get paid handsomely, and we can get a a comp pick for him next year, hopefully. Yes, we love these comp picks. Look, if Aquara gets a big contract. If Galladay gets a bug contract, if Marvin Jones get a contract, comp picks coming our way, and that makes me happy. What's the importance of comp picks, Avery? Tell these, tell the people, because we haven't had one in five years. Why right. is it important for this team? Right. Well, when you when you generally when you're losing a lot and you get free agents and you're becoming this farm for everybody in the league, you have to get a compensatory pick to stay competitive. And usually you can get a third round pick uh, for this. Um, the thing about it is when we did receive compensatory picks, they were bad picks. So now we have to get those picks, make the right player, do the right assessments and, and, and pick the right player. Um, so with that, you know, we have to do a better job because Bob Quinn had, I think, one compensatory pick in like, five years or so and he spent that on on someone that i don't even think is with the team so we just have to do a better job of drafting and seeing who fits the mold of what we want and when you look at uh galladay leaving galladay was a third round pick mm -hmm. Th that's so important yeah. so when when you're getting a compensatory pick for a galladay who's a pro bowler who's a who's an amazing talent you can get a new galladay is possible so that's the importance of a, a compensatory pick and yeah. in the old rules you could never trade compensatory picks but now you can so you can use it as trade bait mm -hmm. and third round picks are no joke they're pretty big if you if you ask a lot of nfl owners and gms third round picks a big deal hashtag isn what, what about jabril cox and chase surratt being drafted by the lions i hope we draft two linebackers possibly draft two linebackers I love Jabril Cox, Mark. I think this dude's a beast. Yeah, I think he's solid as well, man. That's a really good linebacker. Uh, Chaz Surratt's a guy, too, that I kind of like, but um, he's more of a project. Guy that used to play quarterback, actually, and uh, moved over to linebacker, man. He's a playmaker, though. Um, two of those linebackers, for sure. You might be getting those, a guy like uh, uh, Jabril in maybe the second round. Uh, Surratt might go um, maybe the third round. I'm not too sure. He could go in the second, I guess, but... Uh, it's two linebackers I do like, though, for sure.